Every time I'm using dust collection at my CNC router, I have to turn it on manually. And to do that a lot simpler, I install a remote plug and can turn it on and off with this remote here. But now I also have a remote for the whole CNC router, which I can use to control it and also turn the spindle on and off. And I can also control the spindle with the program or the software. Now, I would also like to be able to do the exact same thing with the dust collection. Turn it on and off with the remote or control it with the software and the program. And that's what this video is about. What actually controls the power to the spindle is a relay. And if I turn the spindle off and press that button on the remote again, you can hear the click of the relay. I hope you can hear it. Now in software, I have this button to turn the spindle on and off. Or I could also directly send the code, which is M3, to turn it on and M5 to turn it off. Both of these commands are also in every program. What I also have in software are these two buttons, M7 and M8, for mist cooling and flood cooling. But when I turn them on, nothing happens because my machine doesn't have any of these features. And flood cooling, it will never have. So I could also use this button, or rather the M8 code, to turn on another relay to control the dust collector. So that's how I want to do that. Next, I asked Felder what relay they used to control the spindle, because I could use the same to control the dust collector, because that actually consumes less power than the spindle can. That should work then. And also what pins on the controller would get a signal when I turn on mist or flood cooling. So I got all the information and bought such a relay. Now I just have to install it. Let's see how that goes. The relay I bought is a Finder 40.62.9.048.000, which can handle 10 amps at 250 volts and the spool is activated with 48 volts. Then a matching holder to mount it in a rail, a diode and a clip for securing it in place. I don't want to mount a relay next to the other ones in the machine on the existing rail because the spindle can draw up to a thousand watts and the dust collector up to 600 and the rest of the machine like another 200 which is 1800 watts in total max and that's about 8 amps of current and the fuse of the machine can handle a permanent current of 10 amps so that should be no problem at all. It could only be a problem if I switch the spindle on and the dust collector on at the same time. But I just have to avoid that and then everything should be fine. Of course to get access I have to flip it on the side which I can't handle by myself. Okay, now with it on my lifting table, I can easily move it around. First of all, the best part of such DIY projects. Here is a warranty sticker. And now it's gone. The electronics from the inside are a 48 volt power supply, a 4 axis motor driver, two relays, a bunch of other stuff and the connectors to the outside. This relay powers the spindle and this one the motor driver and this one is also shut off or the power is cut to the motor driver when you press the emergency stop. So if I turn the machine on on its side, you can see that this relay turned on and the driver is powered. And with the emergency stop pressed, the relay is off and nothing will move. And now when I turn on the spindle, this relay turns on and the spindle turns on. And as you can see on this rail, there is a little bit more space. Maybe if I move everything a little bit to the right 
for a third relay and that can then power my dust collector. Sounds relatively simple, but I first need to figure out how to wire everything up. So I asked Felda and got the information and now I can show you with the existing relays. They have A1 and A2 connectors for the coil. A1 needs to be connected to 48 volts and from the power supply there's one wire going to this manifold here. I don't know if you call it like that, but from here the 48 volt is spread with two wires to the existing relays, both to A1 of the coils and two more wires go to power the lead shine stepper driver. For A2 of the spindle relay there goes a wire to a pin that you can control to turn the spindle on. On my new relay now I need to connect A2 to the pin that is controlled by FLUT and that actually is on this connector pin 1. I can show you by measuring if there's a connection or not. So if flood is turned off and I measure from ground to pin 1, there's no connection. Now when I turn it on by pressing the button in software and measure again, now I have a connection. Now my original idea to wire this up was to make a connector and only have one wire soldered to pin 1 and then route that wire back into the machine to the relay. But there is a better solution. I could just solder a jumper from pin 1 to pin 4 because pin 4 goes to this connector and then I can route a wire from here to the relay and then everything is internal except for this basically empty connector. But having a connector sticking out there isn't too bad. There are also connectors here and here. I don't mind that. There's also a third option because pin 1 from here is wired through here to this hole and I could also solder a wire into this hole but it's so tiny that it's less trouble just making that jumper in this connector. Connection between 1 and 4 and no other pin. Now for the internal wiring, one that is about this long should be enough. Now crimping on some ferrules one with insulation and one without. The one without insulation goes into here, into the connector. The end with the insulation is for the relay. Now let's install that first and I think I will slide all of this a little bit to the right on the rail. Okay, now I have some space there. Assembling the relay is really simple. Just press it in place. Also the diode. And then this retaining clip. And now with a little bit of effort, I can mount the relay on the rail. Now the connection from flood to the coil. And now a connection to the 48 volt supply. When I now press flood in software, this relay should turn on. And it does. So now I just have to connect power to these here and then I can turn, plug the dust collector into that. What I did for connecting the power, these two black wires here are the source from the outlet 
and I connected line and neutral to two Vago clamps and from there spread two wires again to the two relays. And what comes out of the relay is one for the spindle that already existed and another cable that is new and from me for the dust collector and I will hook this up to another outlet once the machine sits in place again and ground from my new wire just goes into one of the existing and empty ground connectors. Now I just need to tidy that up again a little bit and then I can set the machine back in place. Okay, but before I set it back in place, I quickly wired up the outlet and hooked it up to the dust collector. I really want to try it out, so it's already turned on. And again for you to see, this is the spindle and this should now turn on the dust collector. And it does. Perfect. Okay, I think that's enough tidying up. Okay, the last thing to make is to wire up the socket and that is really easy. First comes this here. I need to put this over the cable and I already put the ferrules on for testing. You can take this whole unit out and connecting is actually without any tools. Um, line goes in here. I just press these buttons then I can slide the wire in, release and it's secured. Same for ground and neutral. And that's it. And I put this here back in place. This slides over here. And then I tighten down these screws. And that's it. For the time being, I won't secure it anywhere. I just let it sit here, plug it in and that's it. Okay, with everything set up again, I can now start the dust collector with the buttons in the software as I already showed. Or I also have programmable macro buttons on my hand wheel and I used macro button 10 for this. And I wrote a macro that turns the dust collector on when it's off and turns it off when it's on. Quite logical. Yeah, all that effort just to be able to use this button instead of this button. But there's more. Now let's test it with a program. So for a little test program, I will cut a small pocket into this piece. You probably won't see anything because I will have the brushes on. But the interesting part is that the dust collector turns on automatically when the program starts. And go. And at the end of a program, the dust collector also turns off automatically again. And then I can just turn it back on to clean up the rest of the chips. Well, what can I say? That worked perfectly. And the best thing is, I didn't have to change anything in the post-processor code. I made this program with Fusion 360 and all I had to tell it was, or all I had to make was make a check mark at use flood cooling for this tool or basically for all tools and then it puts the M8 automatically in the program and that's it, it works. A little bit ironic is that for all of this to work this empty seeming plug with one jumper has to be connected. I think definitely an upgrade that I won't regret and also can recommend if you happen to have the exact same machine and want to do this. Um, I already showed the relay but I can also put the information about it in the video description so you can search where you can buy it. And just be aware that if you do exactly the same as I did with wiring it into the machine, you will lose your warranty. So yeah, be aware of that. And if you don't want to lose that, you could wire the relay up externally and use an external power source. 
and just use the flat outlet as intended with a cable coming out of it, not going into the machine again. But yeah, then it should also work. And then you could use anything like a dust collector or a shop vac, anything that has to turn automatically on when you start a program. And I guess that's it for this video. Well, what can I say? That worked perfectly. And no.